Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I just wanted to do one of these unpopular opinion videos. I've been seeing this going around on the internet and I was like, you know what? Let me just, let me just put my two cents in today. And today we are going to be doing unpopular opinions, African edition. Woo! I know some of you guys are gonna come for me, but don't worry, I am ready. Today I'm just going to be sharing a couple of opinions I have about Africa, Africans, you know. Um, obviously there's gonna be some generalizations in this, so don't take everything too hard. The other thing is like, this is an opinion. It's my opinion. Opinions can all, everybody has their own opinion or their own perspective and also opinions can change. So maybe based on the information that I get after, from the feedback that I get from you guys after this, maybe my opinion on some things will change. But right now, this is what I think about certain things. So let's just get it started. First things first, I feel like a lot of religious Africans, specifically religious Christian Africans are uh, very anti-African and anti-black. I feel like they demonize a lot of African culture and they praise a lot of European culture specifically because Christianity for most of them were introduced by white missionaries which is why I feel like um, they, they, uh, they praise whiteness and um, kind of make themselves feel their uh, themselves and Africanness look inferior. Next opinion, Ankara is not African. And I, I just mean like the whole materials and designs and things like that. Those things are not African per se. Like they are not indigenous to the African continent. These are, um, these are patterns and materials that were imported to Africa. In French, I pretty sure that we call it uh, uh, Pagne Hollandais. Like in Africa, we used to call Ankara Ankara Pagne Hollandais, which literally translates to material from Holland. So I know that it's been popularized in Africa, but these are not like, it's not traditional African clothing. It's literally everyday clothing that has been popularized in Africa. And it's very annoying when I see like other Africans who act like, other black people wearing it or even other people in general wearing it is like cultural appropriation um like appropriation of african culture when the designs itself although popularized in africa is not of african origin so yeah that, that's an unpopular opinion okay this opinion is more so towards i actually have a lot of things for african parents today the first thing african parents you cannot expect to have um, a specific type of relationship with your uh, your children if you send them to boarding school. I feel like when you're sending your children to boarding school, you have to already, even if it's for a, a better education, you have to acknowledge that you are making a sacrifice in the relationship that you will have with your children. So stop having these expectations of relation, like this, like, I don't even know where you guys get these ideas, but these, like, fantasy like relationships that you have with your children and this bond that you have with your children when you send them to form an identity like spend you send them away in their formative years you will not know your you will not know your children as you will not know your children as well as you think that's the first thing and second of all you cannot expect certain types of relationships or you cannot expect them to confide in you when in the times where they were like becoming themselves you weren't there <laughs> like it's just it unfortunately i felt like we just have to accept that parents just have to accept that you're selfish for not teaching your child their native language. A lot of people think that um, it's only Africans abroad, but even Africans raised on the African continent. I have even some Africans born and raised in like their parents' country that don't speak their native language because their parents didn't feel like it was of any value or they believed they wanted to keep that language as a gossip language between the mother and father. And I feel like you have, you have made a disservice to yourself and to your child by not teaching them that language. Language. This one now. <clears throat> I, in my personal opinion, if I invite, if I ask you to come over and bring an African dish and you're West or Central African and you bring a rice based dish, I'm like, apart from if you're bringing chep, <laughs> if you bring a rice based dish, I feel like you have failed. Honestly, 
I just, it's not that I don't think that these rice-based dishes are not African. I just feel like if I'm asking you to bring a traditional African dish and you bring a rice-based dish, I just, uh, for me, it's just, uh, it's not it. Francophone Africa is more lit than Anglophone Africa. I feel like the African Union should have let Haiti be part of it. Despite how trash the African Union is and how it doesn't do anything, I feel like it was just a matter of symbolism and Haiti should have been able to join the African Union. No if buts, no debates. Haiti should have been able to join the African Union. <laughs> so a lot of you guys know that I grew up in Africa, specifically West and Central Africa, and I went to boarding school between 2002 to 2008. I went to the British School of Lomé, which was like 90% Nigerian. When I was in boarding school, the term Akata was exclusively used for first and second generation Africans born in Western countries. So I don't know when the term became a term to define African Americans, but I feel like <laughs> I feel like honestly that first generations hija hijacked that hijacked that word. Just like Jamaicans had their own culture, black Americans had their own culture. By black Americans, I obviously mean people who have like roots in America for over 400 years. They had their own culture and all of that. So I thought that was exclusively used for first and second generation. And I still feel like it's kind of like a, I'm like, I've never seen anyone use it in a positive way. So I'm still going to say that it is still a derogatory word, but in my personal opinion, it is exclusive to first and second generation, um, first and second generation Africans. And um, my last opinion is that I don't understand why a lot of Africans deny their anti-blackness or their anti-black Americanness. It's like, yo. Within the own African continent, Africans are, um, there's a lot of tribalism, there's a lot of xenophobia. So what makes you think that we would go to another continent and then all of a sudden forget about all of that thing that is literally, like, prevalent in the whole of the African continent? Like, just admit it and do better. Anyway, that was that. You guys dropped some unpopular opinions about Af the African continent. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Ciao. You guys know what? I just finished filming the unpopular opinion African edition and I forgot this one opinion that I had. And it was that a lot of Africans, a lot, not all, a lot of Africans don't really know that much about their own African culture. People will be shouting African culture, African culture, African culture, but they don't know shit beyond weddings. Like literally. <laughs> and that stuff is so annoying, especially when people try to use um, this, uh, this whole African culture as something that puts themselves above other people. It's so annoying. But yeah, that was that was one of the un my one of the unpopular opinions I had. <laughs>